Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. It's that boy G playing. Don't give a damn. He cooler than the fan. Walking real tall. Some say he's man. So, Victor Pope, what's poppin', man? We on Dallas, Texas at a disclosed location. No, we at DLG. What? DLW Grand? That's what we at. Fuck it. That's what we at. What's poppin', man? Same old shit, man. Just making music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. Now, I appreciate you sitting down with me. I don't know you. We just met today. Yeah, you could have said, man, hell no, nah, I ain't sitting down with you, but I appreciate it, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, shout out to, um, you know, Beezy TV and Dallas Global. Real nice. Um, they the reason I'm here. You know, they had like an event going on. We here, but um, let's let's get into it, man. You from what, Arlington? Yeah, I'm from the egg. Man, from tell us egg. about the egg, because I don't know nothing about the egg. Tell me man, about the egg. egg. It's in the middle of Dallas and Fort Worth, so it's like a little... Yeah. Little bedroom city. Mm -hmm. So it's like a little hybrid of both, but it still got its own culture. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I fuck with the egg too. Uh, I was really born in the funk though. Like, but I moved to the egg when I was like 10. But shit, I had, you know what I'm saying? I fucked my first hoes and had my first fights in the egg. So I feel like I'm, I'm from the egg. Yeah. So you mean funk, funky town? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, four that's four words. Word. Four yeah. words. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. okay. Yeah. Now, me, I'm from the outside looking in. I'm from, I'm, I'm in Louisiana. That's where I'm at. But I'm tuning in to Texas. I'm trying to keep my eyes on Texas. A lot of shit going on in Texas. I hear a lot about Fort Worth. Fort Worth this, Fort Worth that. Me, honestly, I thought that Fort Worth was the, the city that had it on lock and be of dub. Yeah. But, um, other, I mean, I hear about Arlington too. Yeah. What are your, how did you feel about what's going on musically in your city? I mean, you know, Arlington, you know, Everybody just doing their own thing. Fort Worth has its own little bubble. It's like a own, own little bubble and its own little culture, and you know, mm -hmm. with all of the beef and shit. And you know, that's how they kind of came up and got they got their shit going. And um, I feel like it's part of the reason why you know shit dying down a little bit, or it's not you know live by the gun, die by the gun. You know, once you live off that negativity, you kind of got it. It's just a cycle. And it'll, it'll probably turn into positivity again because it is a cycle. You know, so it'll probably start benefiting. It's just I feel like negativity is a longer cycle. Yes. Like so, it, it's gonna take a longer time for it to be positive again. Yeah. So you but I mean, yeah, the, the egg is like so, like it, it it got its own culture, but it's kind of it's spread out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I I get you saying about negativity. I'm and I'm just gonna go straight to it. I'm seeing a lot of it in Dallas. Yeah. Um, you know, R.I.P. Walter Two Live. We we hearing a lot about him. He got, you know, he just got recently killed. The dude Ducky P just got killed. There's other things that happened, and you seeing these young guys, they doing their thing, but they the streets just take them out, and these are artists. Yeah, that shit fucked up. That shit don't happen in no other genre. I mean, you know, with rock, you know, you, drugs take them niggas out a lot of the time. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, yeah, this is the genre where you know we use, we lose, we lose a lot of young young talent, and not the drugs, just the stupid shit. Man, well, let's let's take it on a, on a lighter note. You told me you were a comedian, but you stopped. Yeah. A lot of people in the city of Dallas, Texas. I mean, I ain't, I ain't stopped. I'm still a comedian. You know what I'm saying? But, but you, you said you stopped on social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I stopped doing it for money, but you know, I'm still a... Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah, ask you. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you, were, you were known for the comedy first, or did the artistry come first, the music come first? Well, I, the first thing I was known for was... Uh, I was a party nigga. I used to throw parties and shit. And then I got known for battle rapping and then comedy. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I'm most known for comedy for sure. I'm most known for comedy but for sure. So that's that's what I'm in now, just rebranding and rebuilding everything back up. Yeah, yeah. Well, not back up, but you know, inside out, you know, remodeling. So before you stopped the comedy, like like what type of comedy was just like skits? You was doing stand up. You was putting on wigs. Like what what was your like? Uh yeah, man, I was I was on the wigs tough. I had like that and all. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I wasn't really doing no wigs. So that wasn't really my thing. I started off doing stand up uh, for a little bit, and then um, one of my best friends. Now he was my manager. At one point, I ended up having to fire his ass. He was doing too much. But he told me, he was like, bro, you got to do these skits. And I was just like, nigga, I'm a fucking stand-up comedian. I ain't doing that shit. And then uh, I ended up firing his ass after that. And then, like, two years later, I started doing them. I was, and I took off with that shit. Yeah. Now, now, we were sitting there talking before we even did this interview. And you was like, bro, I lost, like, 80,000 followers when I stopped. Yeah. 
Like, how was that? Like, you seeing that significant decrease in your network? I mean, well, I mean, uh, but at the same time, you get the it was a decrease, and um, because like I said, if if I lose eighty thousand followers, but I gain I gain forty thousand to thirty thousand in in that in that time, so it's like okay, I'm losing for every two followers I lose who don't even want to see my shit in the first place, I gain one. You know what I'm saying? So I was gaining a fan. You know, of people who want to see my shit, and I was losing people, you know, whatever the fucking opposite of a fan is anyway. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, it was a good trade-off, you know? So, yeah. Mm, I get it. I get it, man. So, Arlington. Um, you know, you say you, you do music and stuff like that. I mean, that's, that's what you record. That's where you get all your inspiration yeah, from. Yeah, I recorded my crib. I got a little home studio. I don't, I know, I can't even record a nigga shit. I don't like going to studio studios. Why is that? Uh, it's like I feel like it's an intimate process for me, and um, I fuck around. Like I, I like experimenting. I like trying shit. You know what I'm saying? So if it's an engineer, you know, he might be a cool ass nigga, but I don't know that nigga. But I might not. I might not feel comfortable just doing like a voice or like a fucking noise or this flow that I'm not sure is gonna work. So I might feel a weird way about doing it in front of an engineer or like you know, be a whole bunch of niggas in the studio. Yeah. So I mean, I record myself. I mix myself. I do all of that shit. Hmm. Okay. And I also, I, I take so long on songs because I record and I come back to the song like a week later from like a different perspective because I, I done lived the whole week. You know what I'm saying? I've been, I done, you know, fucked a new bitch. I done, <laughs> you know, made some money in a different type of way. I done watched a new show. Yeah. So I come back to the song with a whole new mindset. Mm, so, okay. but we, you know, you, you at a studio is different because it's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, hey, pull up that song I did a week or two ago. Or, and plus you, you pay them per hour. Yeah. And if I if if I were to have to pay per hour for as much as I actually record in a home studio, it'd probably be like, I don't know, like you know, a lot. It'd yeah. be a lot because I'm always recording. I'm always recording, and I, I shoot my own visual. So either I'm, I'm I'm recording my music or mixing my music or I'm mixing I'm editing my videos. So, hey, that's it's cool. like. That was up. Nah. So I, I like to do everything. I'm real hands on. I like to do everything myself. I don't I don't think I can produce. I feel like um. I'm gonna end up doing that shit, but I got I'm doing too much shit already, so. I, but yeah, I like to do everything by myself. How did you get verified? Um, I was working for this company called Super Deluxe when I was in LA. They're a subsidiary of um Turner, Turner, whoever the fuck. And um like Cartoon Network and shit like that. Whoever owned them. And uh I was like, you know, I wanna get verified. That was on Instagram, because I was I got verified on Twitter because I was um I was on Vine and Vine owns Twitter owned Vine. And uh, and then I got verified on YouTube. Uh, I don't know. All of that shit just it, it's, it's just a it's just a domino effect. I mean, once one, and especially it's like once you get enough articles about you, really that's the, that's a big thing too. Getting articles. For sure, for sure. Now the DFW battle rap scene. You was a part of that. You know, what I'm saying one of the big faces. Do you ever think we can get that back? No. I mean, it was a. It's like the same thing with comedy. It's like. You know what I'm saying? With battle rap comedies, like I feel like I've walked I feel like I finished that chapter. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You gotta you, you have you got a bitch you you like you love but can't never get back to that bitch. Alright, but but what that happened with you with music. You know what I'm saying? We seen you do it with comedy, we seen you do it with battle rap. Now that's how you make it to a certain point of music where you walk away from that as well. I don't know, that's like let me I hate to keep using the bitch analogy. <laughs> yeah. But it's like you really in love with a bitch and it's like me asking, you you think you're gonna break up with that bitch? It's like bro, I'm just with the bitch. I don't know. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I get now for sure. I like for people who've never heard your music, I haven't heard your music, I'm like, damn, I want the type of music he make like shit. You don't like he a real gangster nigga. Right. When he talking about the bitches, is he a pimp? Or with like like anybody, like a newcomer, like what type of music do you make? Mm. Uh, I mean, it just depends on what I went through that day. I mean, I just rap about my everyday life. I mean, but you said you were good, like you was like, bro, I'm really good. Hey, go ahead and bust a freestyle. That's what he said. I'm oh, bust a freestyle, bro. <laughs> Let them folks know you not like, like, I'm really good at music. music. I'm like, I, I like that confidence, man. Yeah. I like it. Neither of us had so freestyles. Like, off the top of the head. It's not that I ain't gonna do that. Let me ask you this, bro. How do you feel about the DFW bloggers? How do you feel about them? Do you feel like we post too much negativity? No. Um. I don't want to get his question. I don't think so. I mean, but I don't really pay attention 
as an artist, I just be, you know, I just be looking at competition. I don't really be like, you know, be like, oh, that's too negative, but that's too, you know. Now, as far as the artists and music scene, where do you place yourself in that, in that category? I mean, I don't think I'm, I don't even, I don't even look at it like that a lot, a lot, a lot of the times. Because with the internet, it's like, the reach is like beyond, you know what I'm saying? Like you can blow up despite whatever the fuck is going on in your music scene and your sound can be completely different than whatever the fuck is going on. Mm -hmm. And I think we witnessing that in general with, with most of, um, with a lot of shit because of the internet. It's like a lot of cities don't have a specific sound anymore. I mean, Detroit does, but you know. That's about it. Man, I, I, it's crazy. I'm glad you said that. Hey, Louisiana. Hey, and that's a big part because it's because of the internet. Like, it's we are all so connected and interacted. It's like, you know, I'm you're, the somebody who who lives across my in, in my city is not going to have the same influence as they did in the '90s when you know we didn't have when I could just talk to somebody. Now I can just talk to a bitch in you know New Jersey. I can link up with a nigga in Cali or some shit. Like, yeah. I ain't got to link up with niggas in the city. You're right. But so. subconsciously, do you think that? Other other cities sound like Detroit are rubbing off on everybody else in different regions. Because I made a post earlier this week, like, man, I think Southern rappers are starting to sound more like Detroit rappers. You know, when I first heard Detroit, because I, uh, when I was in Cali, two of my roommates was from Detroit, and they used to play that shit. And this was before Detroit. This was before T. Grizzly. Like, this was before Detroit really took off. And uh, I was like, these niggas from the Bay? Like, they sound like the Bay. They sound like the Bay, and I was like, y'all niggas sound just like, they was like, nah, da, 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 da. and they, they used to talk shit about Texas, we used to go back and forth. So I, I always thought Detroit, the beats too, the beats were just, and the voice and how they how they pronounce shit, I, I always thought that was the Bay. But yeah, niggas is taking um, a lot of Detroit sauce, and I think that's what hip hop is for. I feel like you're supposed to give me that. Who you know your sound from? Who influences you musically? Um, I mean, I, I feel like, that's why my, my sound is so different because a lot of music now, they branch off from different artists. And I stopped doing music and I stopped listening to a lot of new artists around the time. Like I'm, I, I'm not, like I didn't branch off from Thug. A lot of people branched off from Thug and a lot of people branching off from like Uzi and Youngboy. And so I, I probably, I branched off like around a different time. Like, I don't know when I did and when, but I mean, I have a lot of influences and, and also a lot of my influences are people, it's hard to put, for people to put a finger on my sound because all of my influences are from like so different places. Let me ask you this. Do you listen to Drake? Yeah. Do you listen to Big Sean? No. No. Uh, no, nah, he sure? cool though. He cool. I don't really listen to Big Sean. I feel like your flow kind of like how you put shit together, like you going, it's like you talking. It's kind of, it reminded me of Big Sean. But you just do it in your own kind of way. Well, I think Big Sean is really uh, technical with his raps. He's really, he's really loyal to the to 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 the snare. He's really fucking. Mm. Hey, bro, that, now you're talking, you're talking. But that's just from a, like a rapper's like. But when I'm saying when you like it's like some niggas can land on the four and then he'll I'm on the four I'm on the four I'm on the four. But me I'll be I stop on the two I might take a break on the three. And I then you know what I'm saying? I, I don't even know what you're talking about. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't what you're saying on the bars. The bars. Yeah. You, you and I'm, I'm, I'm always gonna land back on a four eventually, but you're gonna be like, but I'm always on a four. Yeah, sure. Now, you did drop a single, you know what I'm saying, titled K Cunningham. Yeah. What influenced that, that single for you? Man, they from the A. And then I was like, shit. I have I, I just wrote a line. I was like, this it just you know it just started off like sunglasses like I'm Johnny Cage, but they buffs though. I might be caved because you know he did that shit for uh, in Detroit and it'll be on the bus and shit. And uh, and I was just like, shit, that nigga is from the egg. And then I I went through uh, his interviews and I uh, I heard him. He was just like, yeah, man, that's that's it, it made me. I love that place. And I was like, nigga, hold on. Yeah. So shit, I ripped that shit and I was like, I put that shit in the song. That, that's why the second verse, the second verse, because I wasn't even really talking about the egg in the first verse. I was just flowing. Then the second verse, that's when I heard that shit for, to, to put somewhere else. And I was like, you know, I was like, I would I would stop there, but he hyped me up. That shit really got me hyped because he was mm -hmm. really, you know. Somebody, it's the patriotism, you know, like, love where you from, even if it's, you know, even if it's not just that, I, I, I really fuck with niggas, when niggas really just rep where they from. I never, I never, like, like, you know, you, you meet a nigga who, who from Dallas or some shit, and he a motherfucking Patriots fan or some shit, or a nigga's a, you know, Lakers fan, like, you know, bro, rep this shit, rep wherever you at, rep that shit. I get it.
And the fact that he was repping that shit and also where I'm from, I was just. You a Cabo fan? Yeah, to the oh. death, to the death, oh, to the death, man. <laughs> to the next. Oh, I'm a Saints fan all the week, so I get it. I yeah. definitely, I definitely get it. So what's next? You know what I'm saying? Uh, this is the fourth shit, quarter of the I, year, man. I just, uh, I dropped, um, I just dropped a 7 a.m. Brittle Roll freestyle. I dropped mm -hmm. that whole the other day. I got some more freestyles coming. Got some more singles coming. I mean, since really June, since July, I dropped. I've dropped like eight singles. Oh, so I just been on some shit, man. Just keep doing that. I'll get back to a project eventually. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to ask you this too, brother. Now, I like I say, I'm. We just meeting each other stuff like that. Do you ever think you'll ever get back to the comedy, or it's just over with? Uh yeah man I don't I was just, like I said hey bring the bitch analogy <laughs> but yeah. I just I can't I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't want to I don't want to have to make money being funny you know what I'm saying that takes the fun out of it mm -hmm. like you do you consider yourself a funny nigga I don't know people tell me like what are, like what are your attributes like what are your talents you know what I'm saying well, or, my my I, one of my talents is of course I can talk and connect with people. Yeah, I think I'm a I'm a likable person. Yeah, like if I get in the room, I can make my way around. I think that's one of my one of my talents, being able to adapt, you know, in any in any environment. Yeah, in yeah. Anybody. That's what I think. You yeah, know? well, for me, I don't want to do something I'm. Yeah. I don't want to have to do something I'm good at for money and have to do it at that uh, at that rate. Yeah. At that rate. Yeah. yeah. I, I can crank songs out like a motherfucker, but with comedy, you have to, I mean, for me, I have to go through a lot of shit. And for me to have to make jokes all the time, shit don't be that funny. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 <laughs> Life is not that funny, my nigga. There's always something I can turn into a song. There's always something I can go throughout the day and like, okay, I can. But like, shit don't be that funny to me. I get it. I think, to be honest though, what's going on in the DFW, what I see with all the beef and all this crazy thing, I think it'll be refreshing. Have, I mean, it's other comedians that's doing their thing in, in the DF Dub, don't get me wrong. But it looks something, and you got your reason. You're just saying, me, I've never even really just seen your company. I think it'll be good for I you. I can juggle. You know. I can do a whole bunch of different goofy shit. Yeah. You know that I don't want to do. You don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I don't know. I, yeah. I always hate that. Like, every, um, everybody's, I think that's a big thing for me because, you know, People always ask me, they're not even just interviews, like my friends, like, get back to it. And it's like, just because I'm good at it, doesn't mean I want to do it. Like, I'm good at a lot of shit that I don't want to do again. Fuck you. I, you know I, what I'm saying? I'm, I'm really good at this shit. I'm really good at rapping. I get it. You yeah. saying that? I was like, really good at battle rapping. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm anointed regardless. Yes, sir. Hey, God bless you, man. Let me ask you this. Like, uh, we've been saying, comments, my blogs, we've been saying, people been talking about it. The beef in the DFW area. Like, in your eyes, cause you out, you know what I'm saying? You not into nothing, you just make yeah, music, stay out the way. Let's make my music. How do you feel about it in this entirety? How do you feel about it? I mean, you know, niggas, it's a, it's a reflection of the music they make. That's their life. That's just their life. So I can't be like, damn, this shit is, niggas gotta stop beefing and making music about beef. I mean, that's like me saying I gotta stop you know, rapping about relationships or rapping about my life. Like, that's their life. 